Now, it's a busy day in Westminster <coughs> as coronation preparations are in their final touches stage and politicians from all parties have their eyes on the still incoming local election results. Yes, they're going to be more concerned about that than the coronation at the minute, I should imagine. Let's talk to Conservative Party Chairman oh, Greg Hams, who's in Westminster. Very good to see you, Mr Hams, this morning. I mean, look, can, can, the, can the Conservatives look at what we know so far from last night is anything other than disappointing. Well, it is disappointing. We've had a quarter or so of the results come in. We always said it would be a difficult night uh, for the party. Uh, the independent projections were all that we're going to lose a thousand seats. Uh, it's still early days uh, so far, but if I, I might say it's not been that great a result for Labour in some areas. Uh, you know, we've actually gained seats in uh, Peterborough, uh, in Sandwell, in Bassett Law, other areas uh, that Labour need to win at the next election. I mean, it has been so far. It does look like a bruising night for the Tories, though, it, it must be said. I mean, Rishi Sunak has conceded it would be a hard night. Have you spoken to him yet this morning? Do you have a sense of how the Prime Minister is feeling? I haven't spoken to the Prime Minister yet this morning, um, but it was always clear that we were going to have a difficult night. Uh, the Conservative Party had a difficult year last year. The whole country had a difficult year. Um, but Rishi Sunak and the whole uh, team are getting on with the job, delivering on the five priorities of halving inflation, restoring growth, cutting the debt, reducing hospital waiting lists and stopping the boats. Yeah, I mean, look, he's, he's, he, the, I mean, there's a lot on his plate with all of this. You've got to ask, so, I mean, what would constitute a reasonable result for you? Say we've got 75% still to come in. There's talk of losing 1,000 seats. I mean, if it was 750, what would you make of that, 500? Well, look, we'll have to wait and see um, as the day rolls on. Uh, what I would say is that, uh, you know, Labour are not making gains across the board that they would need to be making. Uh, in places like uh, Peterborough, in Sandwell, in Bassett Law. You know, these are all seats that Jeremy Corbyn won in 2017 uh, that are actually, uh, the Conservatives are gaining seats there overnight. So it's not a uniformly good picture uh, for Labour. And that is because uh, Sir Keir Starmer is not cutting through. Uh, I've been up and down the country over the last month. I've been to 33 council areas. Uh, I've yet to have a conversation with a voter that isn't improved by mentioning Rishi Sunak and I've yet to have a conversation with a voter where they're enthusiastic uh, for Sir Keir Starmer and Labour. So, you know, I think but, there are obviously but, lessons but have, for us. As I say, overall, it's a disappointment. But they have taken places like Stoke. Now that, I mean, Brexit capital, as it's known, I mean, that, that's significant, actually, isn't it? Well, it's a very, that is a low bar for Labour. You know, Jeremy Corbyn in 2017 won two of the three Stoke parliamentary constituencies. Um, places that Labour do need to win, as I mentioned, uh, Peterborough, Sandwell, Bassett Law are actually seeing some conservative gains overnight. So it's not a uniformly good picture for Labour. And in some places, Sir Keir Starmer is performing worse than Jeremy Corbyn. Turnout was low, it seems. I mean, 40% generally for local elections. It looks uh, closer to 30% from what we, we've seen so far. Why have people stayed away, do you think? Uh, well, look, I think it's a, a bit of a classic sort of midterm uh, phenomenon. Um, I think, to be frank, quite a few Conservative voters or people who usually vote Conservative uh, didn't come and vote uh, yesterday. And I understand... Uh, some of their frustration, I met quite a few Conservative voters in the last month uh, who regrettably wouldn't be voting or weren't going to be voting yesterday. So we've got a lot of work to do uh, to win those people back. Uh, that is why Rishi Sunak, the whole government, are getting on uh, delivering and delivering against those uh, five uh, key priorities of halving inflation, restoring growth, cutting the debt, reducing hospital waiting lists and stopping the boats. Um, look, I know it's extremely difficult to extrapolate and dangerous in a, in a way to extrapolate to a general election. But the, uh, Sir John Curtis describing this, saying that he thinks this is about a 4% swing from the Tories to Labour, which works out about 8, eight percentage points in terms of, of the lead they may have. That's hung Parliament territory, isn't it? 
L Labour could team up with the Lib well, Dems, still... even though they say they won't at the minute. The, but but the, t the Tories are left on their own. Well, well, look, it is difficult to extrapolate from local elections. Uh, but one thing I did, uh, I would say, is that in 2019. Uh, we did quite badly in some areas, yet we still won a good majority in 2019. So uh, a lot can change, a lot can happen uh, quite quickly. Uh, as I say, there's uh, Labour are, are not breaking through in areas that they need to break through. Uh, I mentioned Conservative gains in Peterborough, in Sandwell, Bassett Law. We've gained a seat in Harlow, which was a Labour seat until 2010. Uh, so it's a mixed picture for Labour, obviously disappointing night for us. We've lost uh, quite a few really good, high-quality councillors and really well-run councils. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't think this is a good picture for Sir Keir Starmer overall. Greg Hans, we haven't got long with you, but just under 24 hours, just over 24 hours to go until the coronation tomorrow. Your reflections on the incredible event that we're going to see tomorrow. Well, I just think it's, a, you know, it's an amazing moment uh, for the country. Uh, we're all going to be experiencing something that, you know, literally we haven't had for 70 years. So um, I'm really, really excited about it. I'm really excited to see everybody getting ready for it. As I say, I've been up and down the country the last month and uh, seeing the number of uh, streets, homes, uh, town centres already decked out, ready for the coronation. It's clearly going to be a fantastic uh, time uh, for the whole country uh, yeah. to unite behind our new king.